Hello ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to The Right Opinion, the home of a twat with too much free time. And honestly, on this channel, the topics we've covered of recent have been pretty serious in the grand scheme of YouTube things. I like to be serious, I'm a serious, brooding person. I am the Batman of YouTube, minus the excessive riches. So I thought, you know what, we'll do something more fun. Something more upbeat. Something that the child-friendly twats at YouTube would endorse. TikTok. I mean, what seriously can be said about that. It'll get me rated E for every single little git who wants to click on my videos. Yeah, I'm looking at you, little scallywag. You're watching the right opinion now. Yeah, today we're pulling out all the stops to get Susan's endorsement and talking about... Let's have a look. Charm Predators. Susan, I am so sorry, but I have a duty to serve. One day I'll make content that will rival Jimmy Fallon in its inoffensiveness. And honestly, I really did preside over this topic for a while, really considering whether I should do it. TikTok is the peak of piss take topics that anyone should be doing. Everyone's been talking about it, but honestly, I think one of the incidents outlines a greater phenomenon of recent. The art of child predation. I'll give you a brief rundown of TikTok for any boomers who are watching. I love you all the same, don't worry, but all this new technology, it seems rather redundant to me as well. But there's an audience, a large audience. You know that old cliche where people grab the nearest microphone shaped ornament, a hairbrush, a toothbrush, a dildo, you know, and they sing in the mirror? Well, it appears it's not just some timely fant. It's clear there is some inner vanity that needs to be fulfilled, which is why these apps exist. They are basically a virtual mirror for you to lip sync your favorite music or weird quote or whatever you want to do or maybe a mix and admittedly i am completely guilty of snapchatting myself lip syncing desperately and sending it to my friends and probably confusing them greatly the difference is i don't put it out for the world to see Well, there goes my integrity. Anyhow, basically my point is that TikTok is a platform that promotes this on a public basis so that every 13 year old can post something thinking they're all being hip and then have it there for the rest of their lives. So when they go into some job interview, they can have their ass torn apart by some manager who ain't Googling their name and found this gold mine. And they'll forever be known as TikTok Tim because their name is Tim and they did TikTok. It was rather specific, but my point still stands. TikTok itself was founded initially in 2016, but it didn't start to pick up until a few months ago with the merger of one of its modern contemporaries, Musical.ly, which is another platform with a similar purpose. However, TikTok seems to be even more prevalent than Musical.ly in this current environment, and there are many reasons for why that appears to be. Partly because of the absolute mammoth Chinese market, which is where it was originally launched in 2016, that has likely given it a lot of momentum. But it also has additional features that definitely make it more extensive than previous previous applications, as well as the fairly straightforward interface that does make creating the content for hyper annoying children nice and easy, which is what we like. I may be an old, jaded man at the age of 21, but I must say when I was a lad around the young ages, I did not have many privileges of the internet. I lived in the middle of nowhere and the bandwidth wasn't that great. I remember a time when we used dial up. <laughs> Back then, we were witnessing a real movement, the creation of e-relationships. And I don't mean romantic relationships, though they definitely fall into this category. But I'm talking about connections between people all over the world. The age of the internet is truly an exciting thing, with people being more interconnected than ever. It has created its own culture in a way. And as someone who has benefited from that, there is no way I can ever not give it its kudos. However, the online world also brought many threats. And one that I want to talk about today is that of predators. Predators have always existed, they are nothing new. It's just the internet gives them a new dynamic to play with, and that means that we all have to be more aware. And in all fairness, the education system in the UK was very proactive in making sure that we, as children, weren't roped into such things. And although it's very easy to think to yourself that you won't end up in one of those situations, I mean, who would? Nor would my parents have let me. I 
still did actually. Admittedly, it wasn't through the internet. I don't think that would have happened. But my point is that there are still many people in different environments who are susceptible to that, particularly when you have a rocky real life relationship with those around you and some stranger online offers you a better alternative. Although it may seem absolutely insane to us, it sounds like a possible escape to a naive child. These are the two issues that come to a head today because TikTok, like many other online platforms that attracts large swathes of children, has been facing down criticism for how much their application appears to promote an environment where child predators can thrive. There have been a few instances and suspicious activities that have alerted people to the platform's fertile predatory grounds. However, like many other questions facing down the internet, I feel that it's more complicated than it appears on the surface, and not just a case of TikTok bad, particularly more deeply than it's been presented by other YouTubers. And make no mistake, I don't blame them, because it's very easy to say, this is wrong. And you know what? That's not incorrect either, but there are some deeper cultural discussions that are being placed aside for what I think could actually be quite a stimulating topic. So today, come with me into TikTok as we discuss the intricacies of living on the online world and have a greater cultural discussion over the suitability of the internet for children and how this specifically plays into a situation with an application like TikTok and ask ourselves, is it safe? What can be done to prevent perverts from taking advantage of such an environment? And what can be done for children to prevent them from falling into these situations? Are you ready? Let's go then. Now, today's discussion has been provoked by one specific incident and a flurry of additional things that have been observed by other YouTubers. The main one involves a bloke called the Bude, the Bude, I don't know how to pronounce his name. Frankly, he forfeits the right to be pronounced correctly. I'm just gonna call him the Bude because that's what seems most comfortable to me. Anyone using a name like that should have been spotted as a nonce from a mile away, but unfortunately he wasn't. And maybe the innocent until proven guilty narrative does prevail in these instances, as much as I like to judge people off their names. Now, typically in the past, many of the world application stars of sites like Musical.ly and Vine have been vapid, young, annoying children. And with TikTok, that hasn't really changed. But there is a new brand of celebrity that emerges from all these sites, and one that is created much more regularly on TikTok, and that is the ironic star. Now, the internet makes no secret of how it just decides to make the most random people famous, whether it was Ken Bone, Charles Ramsey, or so on. But this is not the same. The ironic superstar is someone who does everything Thing that the normal obnoxious child does, but you see, they're an old, self-aware adult, so it's hilarious. Ha 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 ha, how fucking funny. Now, these people aren't overly prevalent on any platform. In fact, if you look at the most popular stars from all these applications, they're almost all very young guys or girls who probably should be in school. But hey, premature fame will do until they're addicted to drugs. Wow. I'm in a really cynical mood today. They clearly aren't paying me enough to be nice. Back to the point, young individuals tend to dominate most platforms, but you see TikTok has this little mode known as duets where you, well, duet. Basically someone uploads a hilarious version of them lip syncing and they can allow anyone to quote react to them. And what this has done is bred a whole new genre, basically that being ironic TikToks. In fact, there's a whole Twitter dedicated to just reposting these hilarious, ironic TikToks and retweeting the moderator's garbage too. The ironic TikToks themselves will involve someone using the duet feature in a knee-slapping, self-aware way. This has also yielded plenty of legendary memes. I use legendary very liberally, such as the tracer meme or the hit or miss meme, or both together because I hate you. <laughs> Bonafide classics, I'm sure. Anyhow, this has amplified the market for ironic lads to gain power on the platform, and one of them in this instance was the Bidet, and he has been around. I'll tell you that much. Pretty much everybody has been reacting to him because he is exceptionally creepy. But this is what happens with the reaction commentary genre, which has been expanding exponentially of recent. It's an effect. The creepy old men on TikTok has almost become its own market. People laugh and react to these people, and they get lots of views because audience love these things. It's pathetic, but we love laughing at things that make us feel better about ourselves. So we give it a platform and then we inadvertently promote it without necessarily decrying it, merely deriding it. And there is a difference between those two presentations. And I'm not saying I don't understand why it's done. 
it is hilarious. But the problem with laughing at people like that and giving them an audience is that you subsequently give them power. However, the main reason that people gave the Bud A power in this instance is because people presented them as they were. What do I mean? Ben Shapiro, for example. Now people can completely disagree with PewDiePie promoting him, given the fact that he does have some views that are rather disagreeable. But the truth of the matter is, it's unlikely that Ben is going to gain any additional significant following from the instant because the way he was presented in the PewDiePie video is nothing like he actually is. And and he hasn't. And anyone who did go over to Shapiro's channel probably would be rather disinterested in spite of his destructive brand of facts and logic. Next meme. With the Bud A, people were promoting his stuff as it was. No matter how many times people laughed at how pathetic he was, no matter how many times people mocked him, because a lot of these commentators were constantly punching down, it meant that the Bud A was only going to receive traffic. And it wasn't until content creators like Bionic Pig and Jay Aubrey actually began documenting some serious allegations that these ramifications became very clear. Now, in all fairness, laying the blame at reaction commentators is irresponsible, because although they could have kind of guessed what sort of caliber these sorts of people were by judging them, they didn't really glorify them necessarily. No, the most positive creation came from the numerous compilation sites who found such content hilarious or quote, cringe. As an aside note, I really don't understand why anyone would spend their day sitting down watching cringe compilations like they're specifically meant to evoke feelings of discomfort. Do some people get some kind of kick out of that? Is it some weird kink? Speaking of weird kinks, let's go back to cracking open this egghead. <laughs> Once he had accumulated some sort of clout, I mean, hell, he even had his own compilations, the best of the Bud A. Wow, what an icon. If I'm perverted enough, will I get my own best of compilation? And this gave him admirers. Why is that? Why would anyone admire this creature? Because that's what power does. The Bud A, likely being aware of this, used this power for his new followers and tried to hold this power over the fangirls. And sure, there are like hundreds of more powerful, more suitable guys on the website, but it's a combination of dodgy judgment and accessibility. I'm sure there are lots of people who would message PewDiePie if they could, but settle for me instead because I have open DMs on all platforms. There are many reasons that people admired him, whether it makes logical sense or not. And he used that by sending delightful little videos such as this one. I mean... You're the cute one here, not me, so. Now with attention brought to this, he has been removed from the platform, thankfully, at least I think that's why. There were clearly numerous allegations and they shouldn't have been taken lightly, despite the fact that as of writing this, no actual media site outside of YouTube has bothered to cover it. I don't know if he's been apprehended for these advances, I don't know if he formally broke any laws, but I definitely hope that any future employers see it, though I doubt he'd include it on his curriculum vitae. The thing about the Bud A is that it was easy to catch him out, because he was clearly a massive fucking idiot. A real moron who clearly has no way of working out when someone isn't interested, and he completely deserves whatever repercussions that come to him for his actions. However, not everyone is as stupid. There are some people who are extremely smart and manipulative and know exactly how to take advantage of the environment that TikTok and other platforms support. But let's talk about that. There has been this increasing narrative that given TikTok's astronomical rise, there is this unique threat that it provides. And watching videos from creators, you can understand the impression. Because there are unique parts of TikTok that definitely enable certain features being more easily used. As outlined, it definitely increases the visible threat. But we have to look below the iceberg. To gauge how the threat was exactly, I downloaded the app and to try and work out the settings. And really, in all fairness, TikTok does give you some decent security. Now, most of their approach is fairly libertarian, down to the user. They just chuck the features at you and say, have a ball, which you know, is what I quickly found out. Although the default settings appear to be completely public and they don't provide any real tutorial or disclaimer that could change it. And if you're one of those people who just goes into the app on default settings like I do typically, you might not be made completely aware that you can make your account more secure. But it's down in the privacy and safety tab on your account bio. And here you can change things. Most of the settings you can set to everyone apart from the messaging feature, which can only be set to friends at its most expensive, which is a nice touch at least. 
There's nothing specifically about the privacy settings that make TikTok much worse than many of its contemporaries. So it really just comes down to the environment. And unfortunately, despite all the narratives that TikTok could be a platform for predators being completely valid, there is nothing particularly unique about it that causes that other than its own format and abnormal popularity. If you want, you can turn off duets as well, but at the same time, I'm sure many TikTok creators think any publicity is good publicity, even when they're being mocked in their replies. It's a vanity-driven community that makes people more online, often more open than they should be. And when you have creeps, they're gonna be leaving their settings open to everyone, because that's how they'll end up with a couple infatuated people in their friend requests. And suddenly, you created this situation. There is no doubt to me that there are probably loads of creeps out there on TikTok. But what can be done when they hide in plain sight? The specific problem with TikTok particularly lies in the power it bestows onto a particular demographic that are more likely to contain sexually suspect individuals, bolstered by a culture of irony that finds humor in the juxtaposition of these individuals' existence. The thing is that what this video should have documented is that it's a dysfunctional setup that is completely perpetuated by pretty much every single actor involved. And as long as there's money in the market, it's really hard to hold a certain individual accountable other than the predator. Equally, although the narrative has been drummed up about TikTok, particularly given their younger audience, we have to ask ourselves how avoidable are these situations in the grand scheme of things. TikTok is receiving its attention because of the size. This happens on a regular basis on the internet. What do I mean? Well, we live in a nation, and in that nation there will be some wrongdoings. Now, that nation can take precautions, but it can never fully eradicate it without being overly censorious. The problem is, what can be done without too broadly applying a guilt by association and preventing an application from competing on a market as much as I loathe it. I mentioned this briefly at the start. The internet is its own environment at this point, and it operates like no other environment that we've witnessed in the past. The Wild West of sorts, and politicians constantly trip over themselves trying to complain about various aspects because they don't understand the accessibility it has in normalizing many things that wouldn't be considered normal in many real-world communities. It allows people to express themselves in new ways, for better and for worse. Equally, although addictive, it's detachable. In some ways, the detachability is good. Even though the internet does bring people closer, it puts a barrier in between, which is why I never fully fell into any of the traps that may have been laid for me when I was a younger lad. Because although I did feel that it was quite an intimidating environment, I had that power to just not comply with whatever was going on, and if I became exceptionally uncomfortable, I could just turn the computer off, which did happen from time to time. But equally, the veil of anonymity works both ways, and that means that there are very dark sides of the internet, and extremely coercive, manipulative individuals, people who operate on a much higher level than the Bude. And honestly, the fact that he was using TikTok to predate children should be enough evidence that he was thick as shit. But still, TikTok presents a new interaction between old and young that can be rather unnerving. I understand that, but where do we draw the line? Because I'd love to end all nonsery tomorrow if I could. And that's why we've made it illegal. That's why there have been a lot of laws in place regarding it. TikTok is its own international platform. It's its own environment. And there will be circumstances that are unavoidable to an extent. You could impose an upper age limit for adults, but... Age limits normally rely on relative maturity and predators can be of any age. And once you reach a certain age, you can't necessarily tell that. You could increase the lower age limit, which is what sites like Twitter have done to increase personal accountability and avoidance of child exposure. TikTok did in fact consider raising it to 16 at one point, which would have been fairly proactive considering the people like the Bade were targeting individuals 13, 14, 15. However, they quickly changed their tune and only raised it to 13, which is an improvement Improvement, but was probably motivated by the fact that some of their biggest stars would have fallen foul to this change of policy. Annie LeBlanc, for example, has 13.6 million followers and is only 13 herself. On top of this, there are many ways for underage people to bypass such age limits. As a threshold for idiots, I guess it works. But I remember the first time I experienced an age limit, RuneScape, it didn't take me long to traverse the challenge. It might stop underage kids from being TikTok famous, but it wouldn't stop them from being on the platform. And that's one of the biggest dilemmas of the market. I'm sure TikTok doesn't want any predators on the platform, but their number one priority will always be the dollar. For all my criticisms of TikTok, it is innovative. It has implemented new ideas and new formulas that have yielded a new longevity and a new income. And the problem is, now the cat's out of the bag, even if they removed it, another business would be sure to jump on it. 
and their features don't specifically promote any predatory actions. They're all just small things that may cultivate an environment where it is possible for slightly twisted individuals to gain clout. And as documented, there are clearly inside and outside influences and cultural problems that create a narrative more clear. So let's put it all together for this final part. It's every day, bro. It's every day, bro. I say it's every day, bro. You know it's me, the miner, and I always mind diamonds. Yes, I can mine, and no, I don't play Roblox. The thing is, TikTok's duet feature is a great marketing tool, and it's absolutely genius in many ways, and promotes some ironic content that motivates people to interact with it on a longer basis. It will probably fade into the background eventually, but for now, it may well continue to dominate the landscape for a long time. But there are many justified concerns that such a behemoth will always yield. I think that the whole TikTok predator situation can reflect a greater criticism of culture, not just specifically the platform. However, I would have some suggestions suggestions that maybe they should take forward that wouldn't require necessarily losing out your complete business model to another brand. Maybe this could just begin with a bit more obvious outline of the privacy settings, assuming the best is always optimistic and if they want to change it they can, but maybe just bringing attention to the fact that they can change it because I'm sure the hyperactive child doesn't really pay much attention to the privacy settings that are incurred on the platform. If there's a parent involved, they may take preference to that as well. Equally, I'm aware that it is ages to assume assume that every old person on the platform is a creep and that culture should never be just restricted to age. However, when you are making a platform with an age limit that supports children under the age of consent in many countries, I would still recommend monitoring that content more closely and making sure innocent videos are not being taken advantage of so easily. We've had similar situations like this before on YouTube. Kids were innocently uploading content and people were taking that content and reframing it for fairly sinister purposes. At the end of the day, you can't necessarily prevent some of these things completely, but you can keep a heavy tab on them so that when their context might change, you can intervene appropriately. If someone gets off to someone existing, for example, we can't stop the victim in that instance from existing. We have to ask ourselves how much can we restrict and how much we can prevent. It is an age-old issue of what liberties need to be preserved. It is a difficult question, but the thing is, I think although TikTok can make some of their features more salient and make it safer, it's equally just a case of making sure people are being educated. What do I mean? Well, as said, throughout school, we were constantly warned of catfish. Adults posing as children on the internet to try and lure you in with their enticing life because they understood you, fellow kid. We were also taught about stranger danger and how not just to go with anyone who said they'll give you a lift because they can give you a lollipop to suck on. A foreshadowing metaphor, I'm sure. The point is, the buddy was neither of these. He was not someone who was offering children candy in the streets, not that we know of at least, nor was he posing as a child online. He was a fat, bold man, not the pinnacle of attraction. I certainly wouldn't tap that to say the least. However, he ended up in a position that many questionable people on the internet have ended up on themselves. Many people who really should have no power, considering that the person on the other side of the screen can just up and leave. The buddy was an idiot, but he reflects a very overlooked trend on the internet, and that's one we can derive from real life. Over the last few years, we have seen the power structures amongst places like Hollywood gradually being taken apart, scandal after scandal after scandal, all reflecting a network that many people had been complicit in and enabled through the communities involved. It was amazing, given how public these figures were that everything was just swept under the rug to many people's ignorance. We had it in the UK too. Individuals like Jimmy Savile, Rolf Harris, unbelievably public, went completely under the radar, despite some very obvious hints. The thing is that this is what power does. It intimidates people. And the online world is creating new forms of these communities that no one seems to be ready to understand. Within these communities, like anything, you have hierarchies and children who want to be a part and want to join in. And they have people they admire role models who are more accessible. Remember what I said earlier. They are then put in a position where they are offered a chance to be a part of something. And if they don't, well, then they won't know what they're missing out on. And I understand that sounds completely bizarre. The fact that some kid with their whole lives ahead of them would somehow end up sending nudes to a 40 year old. But honestly, it's one of the biggest problems that I found with younger individuals online, myself included. 
is that they tend to have a very in the moment perspective. Looking back on my childhood, I can confidently say that barely anything that happened to me would have had a bearing on my opportunities right now. But back then it seemed make or break. This is a chance to do something. If not, what will the consequences be? With this person in power, with this trusted figure. The buddy was exposed because he didn't really have any of these. Everyone kind of assumed he was a creep because he behaved like one, but he still benefited from the position of power that almost gave him what he desired. And there are many people who've done it and got away with it because of their clout. Another real problem is the privacy that many of these sites generate. Many situations include people going to Snapchat, coercing what they need, and then nothing happened. You used to have to be really wealthy and powerful to set up such twisted rings. But all you do nowadays is have a bit of internet clout and Bob's your uncle. A creepy, noncy uncle, but still your uncle nonetheless. Everything is much more accessible, and given the fact that all some of these cretins demand are instant nudes over Snapchat, it might as well have never happened. Power intimidates a lot of people, particularly children, and that was something that was never really acknowledged at my school. Younger individuals need to acknowledge that these people don't need to have the influence over their lives if they don't want it to. It's an uphill battle, but in my opinion, I think with the new creation of these online worlds, these are things that are more prevalent and more important to discuss than ever. Even if I had to use bloody tick TikTok as a proxy to push that message. I don't think the solution is just to shut down these applications because as I said, makes these incidents somewhat inevitable. But working on awareness and actual information rather than the classic school narrative of how computers melt your brain might be useful. Equally, as commentators and as compilation makers, I think about the narrative you're creating when dealing with these people. I know that people didn't necessarily have proof that he was a creep before. And frankly, I doubt that'll change much given how faceless and lacking accountability a lot of these compilation creators are, but hey, what can you do? To add to this, I'm not saying that people shouldn't make videos on these people. I'm not saying that they should be excluded and I've never supported that, but make sure the framing is accurate, and if you have a hunch that your video may bolster them, and they might be seedy, presenting them as merely some clumsy chump may not be a great idea. The world is changing for everyone, and one of the most recently observed problems specifically coming from a website like TikTok reflects a greater concern, and how illegalities, once restricted to the most privileged and most elite, are now increasingly accessible within the creation of communities of varying age, accessibility, and vulnerability. The Bade was an idiot, but not everyone is, and it's the ones who haven't been caught who are the ones we should be most worried about, because there's something about the internet that just has a very unique group of people, and many of whom are quite vulnerable, and they need protection rather than exploitation. There are many things the internet normalizes, and TikTok can show that there are specific features that can end up supporting that inadvertently. However, there are places that we can draw a line in, and remember that we can still hold these people to account and make sure that they don't get away with it just because they are on the internet, and make sure that these situations are avoided and cut down as soon as possible. Is TikTok safe for children? Not entirely. But neither is Twitter, YouTube, or in fact 90% of websites. Sure, there are definitely some things that definitely make TikTok more vulnerable as a platform, but we can acknowledge them. And we have to prepare ourselves for unsafe environments. It's inevitability at this point. And most educational systems do a good job of this. But maybe this new narrative of power should be integrated more. Maybe it has been already. I don't know, I'm no longer in school, thankfully. If I was, it would probably be a bit creepy. What are your thoughts? Leave them in the comment section below. I would love to hear them. I'm an open guy. I tend to read the top set of comments for a bit. And um, not in the comment section. You can reach me on Twitter, at the right opinion. I have open DMs if you want to talk to me there. Discord too. Hit me up. Facebook even. I use that. See, I'm, I'm all on every site. Apart from Instagram. Not yet. I also want to give a big shout out to my editors who have once again done a fantastic job. I'm going to leave their links in the pinned comment and you should definitely go and click them. Check them out. Send them some love. They really do deserve it. They are great people. Great, great people. I love them a lot. Also want to give a big thanks to my patrons. A few on the screen right now. They're in the pinned comment too. I love them a lot. Means a lot. And a personal thanks to Ryan who is still being extremely generous and I do not know why. But I'm very grateful of it. Thank you, Ryan. Anyhow, I don't have too much else to say. Really much appreciated of recent. However, until then, I'm the right opinion, and I'll see you in the next one.